In this short video, I'm going to explain how you can find the yield to maturity of a zero coupon bond. So let's start by looking at what a zero coupon bond actually is and how it works. So let's imagine we have a bond that is a $1,000 bond and it lasts for five years. It's going to be repurchased for $1,000 in five years, but you actually only pay $800 for it. And unlike a normal bond, you're not going to get income each year. So in the first year, you get nothing. Second year, third year, fourth year, and fifth year, you're going to get no income at all. But then at the very end of the bond's life, it's going to be repurchased for its face value of $1,000. So you'll receive $1,000. Because you only paid $800 for it, that's when you get your return. So you're going to earn $200. If you sum up all of these cash flows, you're basically getting $1,000 from an $800 investment. So as a result, you make a profit of $200, and a profit of $200 out of an investment of $800 gives you an overall 25% profit. However, this is just the profit you get at the end. The question is, what is the effective profit that you get each year? What is your actual rate of return? So the question we really want to be answering to find the yield to maturity is what is the equivalent compound rate of return per year? And the answer to this question is, of course, the yield to maturity. The yield to maturity tells you what compound rate of return you're getting from this bond. And with a zero coupon bond, it's all at the end. If you want to find how to find the yield to maturity of a normal interest paying bond, you need to look at my other video that I'll link to in the description below. So let's look at how you do it for the zero coupon bond. So this is the formula that you need to use. The yield to maturity is the nth root. So if n was 2, it would be the square root. If n was 3, it would be the cube root of the face value divided by the price minus 1. And the key with this formula and the mistake that is very easy to make when putting it into a calculator is to forget that that minus 1 is not inside the square root. So be very careful about that. So to recap, We've got FV for the face value. FV is one variable, not F times V. FV stands for the face value. Then we've got P for price. That's the price that you actually pay. The face value is what you will get back in returns. And then N is the years to maturity. So if you've got five years left on the bond, N would be five, for example. So let's look at how you could do this calculation in practice. So we'll go back to our example that we had in the previous slide and break down all of the variables from here. So the face value is $1,000. It's a $1,000 bond. The price is just $800. That's what you pay. And then the number of years left on the bond is five. So you have all of the data that you need. So let's have a look at the equation, but let's color code it. So you've got all of your different variables there. And then I've matched that up with the information from the previous slide. All you need to do now is replace each thing in the formula with the appropriate number. And I've done the substitution here. You would then enter this into your calculator, being very careful to ensure that the minus one is outside the square root. Otherwise, you will get problems. When you put this into your calculator, it will give you what looks like a very small number. This is a decimal answer, so you need to multiply it by 100 to get it as a percentage. And that says that the yield to maturity is 4.56% when we round it. So you're earning 25% return in total. And that 25% over five years with a zero coupon bond is equivalent to earning 4.56% compound per year. And that is how you do the yield to maturity. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please like and subscribe below. And also you may want to check out my video explaining how to find the yield to maturity of a more standard interest earning bond. And finally, thank you very much for watching.